All right, folks. Uh, looks like everything's working as it should be. I uh, wanted to jump back on and get into our uh, devotion for the week. We are continuing our study on gender and sexuality. And again, we are at the very beginning of our Bibles in the book of Genesis, just continuing to look at the unfolding pattern that God had set up at the beginning of creation uh, for the man and for the woman. So we're looking at Genesis uh, chapter 2 today, verses 18 through 25. So let's go ahead and read that, and then we'll get to work. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh, and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for uh, this devotion, this time together as a church. Thank you for all those who are tuning in and who will be tuning in. Pray that this study is a blessing to them as it has been to me, and that you would help us to understand uh, these categories and these principles uh, that you have uh, set down for us uh, in creation. Help us to follow them out and live them out in our lives to your glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so last week we sort of looked at a broad overarching view of the creation of man and woman. And today Moses zooms in for us uh, uh, on the creation of man and woman and gives us a little bit more detail uh, in our story. And today, I want to focus on a few key details uh, in this passage. Not focusing on everything it says, but just a, a couple of things, three things. First, uh, I want to uh, focus on the fact that the text tells us that Eve was created to be Adam's helper. She was created to be Adam's helper. Uh, second, uh, the fact that uh, the woman is taken from the side of man, or she is made uh, from the rib of the man. Uh, and then lastly, the fact that Adam refers to her as woman, and that she is said to be made of his very flesh and bone. So first, she is referred to as Adam's helper uh, up there in verse 18, then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. And then in verse uh, 20, the man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. Uh, now, many will begin to look at this and say, that's sexist. <laughs> she's, she's created to be Adam's helper, right? Uh, but what I want you to notice is the text does not say that she was created to be Adam's lesser. She is created to be Adam's helper. And we saw last week that mankind is created in uh, the image of God. Okay, And that means that man has the same, uh, all man, uh, men and women, uh, have the same Role, or they have the same value and worth in the sight of God, and they are worthy of the same level of respect. And so the text is not saying something about her worth. It is rather saying something about her role and her function uh, in God's economy. And this is important for us to get. 
God makes a distinction between the role and the function of the man and the woman right here at the very beginning. He lays it down for us at the start. Uh, and so uh, that is important for us to get. We must, uh, we must use that as our baseline uh, when we are beginning to articulate and define the different roles of man and women, uh, man and woman in our society. So this is saying something about her function in the world. Uh, the word helper is often used in Scripture to uh, refer to somebody who comes alongside another who is inadequate to perform a task on their own. So Adam and Eve has called, uh, God has called Adam and Eve to, uh, to do a specific work in the world, namely performing the dominion ma mandate of, sub of subduing and, uh, uh, and taking dominion uh, over the world and, and being fruitful and multiplying. Uh, and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, in the coming days. Uh, but uh, they, they are both given uh, this task uh, to perform, and uh, Adam uh, is called to lead in that task, but he is going to need some help uh, carrying it out. Um, and so God creates Eve to come in sort of as an equal partner with Adam, uh, if you will. She is equal to Adam, but she becomes an equal partner with Adam uh, in this task that God has called them both to perform in the world. So her role or function is not exactly the same as Adam's, but they have the same goal. They are working towards uh, one end together, but nevertheless, at the same time, while they work towards uh, that end that God has called them to, uh, they have separate and distinct functions that they perform along the way. I uh, hope that makes sense. Um, so uh, that is uh, the first point, that she is called to be his helper. Second, uh, the equality is emphasized, I think, even further here uh, in the fact that Eve is said to be made from Adam's side or to be made out of what uh, one of his uh, ribs, which would include some of Adam's flesh, as Adam says there uh, later on. She's made of his flesh and bone. Uh, verse uh, 22, um, no, I'm sorry, verse 21, so the Lord... Uh, God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man was made into a woman, into a woman, and brought her to the man. Okay? Uh, Adam even says, like I said uh, afterwards, that she is made of his flesh and bone. So God does not uh, reach down and and create Eve from uh, the dust of the earth, as he did Adam, but rather he takes a piece of Adam and he, uh, and he uh, fashions Eve from it, as if to say, look, <laughs> she's the same as you, Adam. Uh, I even made her uh, out of a piece of you. Uh, now, uh, she is made from the side of Adam, I think, to express the intimacy that Adam uh, would share with this woman, the intimacy that man would share with woman, the, uh, and by extension we see from this relationship the intimacy that man would share with women, uh, or men would share with women throughout the rest of human history. I, I think that Matthew Henry says it best when he said, the woman was made of a rib out of the side of Adam, not made out of his head to rule over him, not out of his feet to be trampled upon by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, under his arm to be protected, and near his heart to be beloved. It's just a beautiful picture of uh, the relationship that the man and the woman uh, is to have in creation. Finally, I said there were three things. She is referred to as a woman. Adam calls her a woman. <laughs> now, uh, this is not as Reverend Critton used to say, the, uh, the, the pastor that used to come into the prison in Orlando where I was locked up. Uh, this is not because when Adam first saw her, he was like, whoa, man. <laughs> and so he decided to call her woman. No, uh, in the Hebrew, the word uh, the word. Uh, at, uh, for man is ish, uh, and the word for woman is isha. So ish and isha. So do you see the connection that Adam is making there? Uh, he is saying there are similarities. Uh, she 
was taken from the man, and so she shall be called woman. Uh, she was taken from Ish, so she sh shall be called Isha. So there is great similarity between the man and the woman, but at the same time, Adam is already recognizing a distinction between the man and the woman. The man and the woman are not exactly the same, according to Scripture, according to Adam, and according to uh, God. Uh, she is created by God similar, yet unique, okay? And that's important for us to get. She is similar, but she is unique in, in many fashions. Uh, she is going to be Adam's helper. Uh, she is going to make up for uh, his lack. Uh, in other words, Adam is not going to be able to uh, accomplish the task that God has called him to do uh, on his own. She's actually going to help him do those things. She would complement Adam in the work uh, that he was uh, uh, going to do. That is, she would help him to complete that work, and he could not do it without her. It was an utter impossibility. He needed her to do it. Uh, and it is the same today. The man needs the woman to perform the task that God calls him to. The, the work that God called Adam to do would not come full circle uh, without uh, the help of the woman. And this is important uh, for us to get straight in our day, friends. Uh, a man being equal with a woman uh, does not mean that they are exactly the same in every respect. They are not the same. It means they both have the same worth, right? Uh, the woman is not lesser than the man. She is equal to the man in value. They are both created in the image of God, but nevertheless, they have distinct roles and functions that they are to perform, and they are to. Uh, she is to complement Adam in that work that she uh, that God has called him uh, to do, and it would not be completed uh, without her. Um, so men are called to be leaders right, uh, in uh, the church and in society and in the home. Uh, and this is important for us uh, to get. Men uh, have this leadership role in society and uh, women come alongside and help them uh, in God's economy to accomplish that task that he has called both of them to do, but the man is to lead, right? So, so in the home, the man is to be the spiritual leader, and the woman is not, right? The, the woman is to, is to support him in that role. She is to help him and encourage him in that role. She even takes it up when he's not there, uh, but uh, the man is ultimately the one who is to do it, unless you don't have a man in the home or something like this. Um, but uh, men are called to lead in the home, and in the church, it is the same. Men are called to be pastors, Women are not. Uh, they have a different role and function in God's economy. Women can be uh, uh, evangelists and, and missionaries and teachers at different uh, capacities. Uh, they, they supplement and support the work of the church, but they don't lead it ultimately. They are not out at the forefront leading the church. Men are called to do that, and it's the same in society. Uh, men are called to be to be generals and and uh, and governors, men fight wars and lead nations, and women do not. Okay, uh, so in the coming days, what I want to do is uh, begin to uh, dig a little bit deeper into uh, this idea of men and women having different roles and functions within society, and we're going to do that by looking at what the scriptures have to say about these things from beginning till end. Um, we may not get to everything that it has to say, but we'll, we'll go over a bunch of stuff. But we, we had to lay the initial groundwork to do uh, in order to be able to do that. Uh, we have to start with what God says at the very beginning and, and understand uh, the framework that God gives us uh, for men and women uh, to live out of in society. Uh, we have to understand the groundwork. This is sort of the foundation, and everything else grows out of, uh, out of that. And so what we'll do in the coming days is we'll look at some of those different examples in Scripture, uh, uh, at the different roles and functions of 
of men and women. And then that will help us to be able to understand a little bit better uh, what those things are supposed to look like today in the day in which we are living. But again, we had to start here first. We had to lay the groundwork. Uh, we start here at the very beginning, uh, and we see that, that from the start, uh, God has uh, created man and woman equal. Uh, he has given them one common goal, one common task to uh, perform, but nevertheless, they have different uh, roles and functions. They have distinct roles and functions in that task, in, in God's economy, in, in, in helping to uh, do the work uh, that God is at work to do in the world, namely redeeming all things to himself through uh, the man Jesus Christ. So I hope that's helpful. Just, just, a, little, um, just a little primer, uh, a little bit of a uh, bit of an introduction to what I want to talk about in the rest of this study. If you have any questions, as usual, please uh, please text, call, uh, stop by, whatever. I'm here. I'm available, praying for you. Uh, love you all. Uh, let me know of anything that I can uh, do for you or any way I can be of help. All right. The Lord be with you. Uh, I, will, I will see you Sunday. We'll be back uh, live streaming our service this Sunday. Looking forward to being with you all. Um, until then, uh, I, I pray that... Uh, all is well with you, and, uh, and that uh, God would be with you. Like I said, uh, I'm here. I'm available. All right. Take care.